Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, particular thanks for the close-up shots on, uh, on Rachel there. I'm sure she's, uh, <laughs> she's looking tanned, so it's all fine. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us at this phenomenal venue in Bristol. We the curious. And you may be curious, too, to know why we're here this morning. Well, I'm going to put you out of your misery. We're here to announce the official launch of our EU election campaign. So a very, very warm welcome on behalf of the whole team at Change UK, the independent group. We're here today with a really, a very simple message. If you're fed up with our broken politics, join us, get involved and let's change it together. It was just nine weeks ago that 11 MPs, we decided to come together across the political divide and work together to form the independent group. And what a nine weeks it has been. Eight MPs resigned from the Labour Party and three of us from the Conservatives. And they were incredibly difficult decisions to take. But our parties had moved so far away from the centre ground of mainstream British politics. And despite all our best endeavours, we knew it was too late and we couldn't change them. So we had no choice but to say enough is enough. And since then, all the evidence shows that we did make the right decision. The Conservatives have drifted yet farther to the right, now so anti-Europe and anti-business that Conservative voters can barely recognise their party anymore. And Labour have continued to let the country down, offering ineffective opposition to a government at the time when the country needs it most, lacking leadership on Brexit and still, still failing to tackle anti-Semitism. But as an MP, you're in a privileged position to be able to do something about it. And we knew it was our responsibility to act and give the country a better choice. And last week, the Electoral Commission, they approved us to stand as a formal political party. <laughs> that's, that's something to celebrate. <laughs> when was the last time somebody applauded a new political party? <laughs> You're supposed to boo at that point. <laughs> We're going to have to do this again. But with Parliament in deadlock and European elections scheduled for the 23rd of May, we're here to say we stand ready. Because these elections are a chance to send the clearest possible message. We demand a people's vote and the right to remain and campaign to remain in the European <laughs> Union. And we are not afraid to say it as clearly as that. So the call went out from Tigger Towers. <laughs> we need a team. And wow, did you hear us. From every corner of the UK and every background, 3,700 people offered to stand as candidates. And I'd like to thank every single one of them today for standing up and being prepared to be counted when their country needed them the most. Yeah. Because so many of you had no prior political affiliation at all. Just like me when I decided to become an MP, but you were prepared to get stuck in, realising that democracy actually isn't somebody else's job. And we will need your determination, your support and your patriotism in the hard coming weeks and beyond. And for that we say thank you. Now today I am very proud, like a proud Tigger mum, <laughs> to introduce our tickers. <laughs> These, ladies and gentlemen, are our candidates. From all walks of life, right across the UK, teachers, nurses, leading professionals in their field, carers, ex-armed forces, public sector, private sector, people who are new to politics, and disillusioned, seasoned politicians who have all concluded the same thing, that the old political parties have let them down. This is no rebel alliance. This is the home of the Remain Alliance. <laughs> mm. Mm. 
And just like us MPs, many of our candidates have left their political parties to join us. And just like us, they believe the British people want politicians to put the national interest first, not themselves. And together, we will fight for the change that this country needs based on evidence, not ideology. So that's the evidence to tackle climate change, the evidence to tackle poverty and social injustice, and the evidence to tackle those healthcare challenges. And right now, a Brexit deal carved up just to keep the two main parties intact, that's not good enough either. And we'll do everything in our power to ensure that the United Kingdom has a better choice for the future. This new party is standing up and speaking up for the mainstream Britain that we all know, and today we ask you to join us. And when I say us, I mean this fabulous team. I'd like to introduce you to three of our European candidates. Andrea Cooper, one of our candidates in the Northwest. <laughs> Because we meant it when we said we weren't looking for candidates just from the political bubble. Now, Andrew has worked for many years supporting young people in particular areas of deprivation. And apparently she's also a yoga teacher. So maybe you can teach me some moves, Andrea. <laughs> Vicky Grulev. <laughs> now, Vicky is a qualified teacher and she's going to be representing um, our southeastern region. She's been a Labour parliamentary candidate, a Labour councillor, a Labour constituency chair. She's passionate, as we are, about enabling more women to get involved in politics. And I'm also reliably told, built a shed this weekend. <laughs> That's me too back at you, isn't it? <laughs> she's got the hands to prove it. Paint. And paint as well. And finally, Gavin Esler. <laughs> Now, I'm sure you will recognise him from his 40 years, is it really 40? It is. 40 year career in TV and radio journalism. You'll know him as the BBC's chief correspondent for North America, Newsnight presenter. He's interviewed everybody, from Angela Merkel, Bill Clinton, and most impressive to me, Dolly Parton. <laughs> and as one of our candidates in London, he's gonna be working a whole lot more than nine to five, I can tell you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to put your hands together for Gavin Esler. Thank you, Heidi, and thank you all for coming. It's great to see you. We are beginning something really big. I am very, very proud to have been selected as Change UK candidate for London, one of the many in the top team for Change UK in that great city. I have never been a member of a political party, but I am now. I've never been a candidate in an election, but I am now. And I've never been seriously worried about the future of our country, but I am now. Our political system is a joke. It's a worldwide joke. They are laughing at us, not with us, at us. It's broken. We know that this country cannot possibly be strong abroad when it is weak at home. And I want to help do whatever I can to start to try to change this. I have joined this Remain Alliance for three reasons. Stop Brexit fix Britain, and move on to reform the EU. And the first step is a people's vote, because we have to stop Brexit now. As I campaign in London, I have a number of people in mind, including my own family and my children. But I've also got a friend in mind. I'm not going to name him because it would embarrass him, but he's self-employed, he's in his 40s, 
and he would describe himself as working class. He certainly works. He works six days a week. I know sometimes he works seven days a week. He pays his taxes. He loves this country. He voted leave, and he told me why. He told me that they, the Labour and Conservative parties, have done nothing much for him, and he stopped voting altogether. But he did vote in the 2016 referendum, and he told me why again, to send a message to the political class, and his message was that Britain needs fixing. And I agree with that message. The trouble is, the Brexit he was sold, and we were all sold, cannot fix anything because it cannot be delivered. It was sold in a deceitful campaign. It was based on false promises. It was based on cheating and lies. And we all know any version of Brexit will make us poorer as a country. And the Prime Minister refuses to say otherwise. Any version of Brexit will not fix what my friend thinks is wrong with this country and what every one of us knows that is wrong in this country. Why does the British political system not work? Why do traditional British political parties seem so remote and out of touch as if it's a game for other people? Why do so many of us work hard and cannot get ahead? Why are there so many food banks in what we are constantly told is the fifth richest country in the world? My friend is a British patriot and so am I. He's an optimist, and so am I. I was born in a council house in Clyde Bank, which is on the outskirts of Glasgow, working class area, and the first member of my family to go to university. And I see that as having been a great privilege. I grew up among honest, working, decent people, some of whom voted for Brexit. But when I see on television pretend men of the people, the posers of Brexit, the Farages and the Reese Moggs selling the same old snake oil, I am absolutely appalled. I'm sick of it. Yeah. <clears throat> they claim to speak for the British people. They do not. They stole our patriotism, and I want it back. I, I want to pay just one small tribute to Nigel Farage. He's honest about wanting to wreck the NHS. Some of them aren't, but he's honest about it. He wants an American system. I lived in America for eight years. I really do not want an American system of health care. But these people have been rumbled, which is why there is talk of taking up a rifle, no more Mr. Nice Guy, betrayal, and all that hate speech direct against the increasing number of people, including those of you in this room, who know them for what they are. It's nasty, it's mean, and they're wrong. Millions of British people like me are fed up with these posers of the people. They're fed up with the Conservative Party having its psychodrama over Brexit, and we're also fed up with Labour Party's unbelievable equivocation about Brexit. The Remain Alliance gives us all hope. We know Britain is better than these brain-dead politics of the past. We know that stopping Brexit is the first step to a better Britain. We know that Change UK is the only all-UK party that can bring about real changes to start fixing what we all know is wrong. Ask yourself, what time is it? It's time for a change. It's time for Change UK. Thank you very much. Now, I've been privileged to be with a number of hugely inspirational candidates, and let me introduce you to just one of them, Andrea Cooper, an ex-chief executive, uh, a third sector entrepreneur, a wonderful person, a great candidate who is going to win in the northwest of England. Andrea. <laughs> Hello, 
everybody. Uh, as you heard, my name is Andrea Cooper, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be the candidate for Change UK, the independent group in the Northwest. A vote for Change UK is a vote for Europe. I don't have a political background. I am what you could call an everyday woman living in Liverpool. I'm from Liverpool, and I attended a comprehensive school there. And I've lived and worked across the region in Manchester, Lancashire, and Cumbria. And I have a deep affection for the whole region. I returned to Liverpool a few years ago to maximize my contribution to my hometown. So like many people in the Northwest region, I can see with my own eyes how we've benefited hugely from being a member of the EU with a significant amount of EU funds invested in our infrastructure and skills and with our outward and optimistic view of the world. <clears throat> but some people do not see this and do not value this. And it's vital that we come together again to have a better, clearer conversation about the EU. For many years, I've been dedicated to helping young people. Uh, and it's young people who stand to gain the most by staying in Europe. I currently work for Nosley Youth Mutual, a really fantastic youth service in the second most deprived borough in the country, supporting young people day in, day out to develop a sense of belonging and a sense of hope. So it's been clear to me and many others for a while now that the main political parties are letting us down. I am so disappointed that the established parties have not shown to me and others the clarity and leadership that we deserve on the important issue of Europe, the people's vote and the benefits of remaining in the EU. And it's urgent that young people, men and ordinary women like me get out and vote on the 23rd of May for Change UK, the Remain Alliance. We need to show everyone that we believe in the economic growth and opportunities for young people that the EU brings to the UK. And it's absolutely vital part of all of our futures. So thank you. I'm going to hand over to my fellow candidate, Vicky Growleth. Vicky. It really is true, I did build a shed this weekend. And if you look closely, you can see I'm actually covered in paint. But anyway, we will we'll move on. I'm Vicky Growleth. I'm one of the candidates in the South East. And I just want to tell you a little bit about me and how I've ended up here today. So I grew up in an ordinary working class family, like Gavin, the first in my family to go to university. And my family were really firm on one thing, to fight for what you believe in and to basically embrace the school of hard knocks. And it's a badge that I wear with pride and it drives me every day of my life. Now, I do have a political background. In 2015, I stood for the Labour Party in a target seat in the southeast of England. I've been Labour Group leader at Wickham District Council, and I've had pretty much every volunteer role in the Labour Party. But last year, it became really clear to me that Labour was no longer my political home. In fact, if, I was, if I'm really honest, it's a place where I felt deeply uncomfortable and no longer valued. So in the new year, I made the decision, and it was really tough actually to walk away. Then Change UK, the independent group was launched. Now, it would have been easy at that point to say, do you know what, I'm done with politics, it's been quite tough. Um, I'm gonna move on and let someone else have a go. But you know, it's just not my style. So that's why I'm delighted to be part of this amazing team to be a political movement that turns politics on its head, energizes people, and changes politics and our country for good. We are about a people's vote and finding those practical solutions to the many, many problems that our country faces. I, for the first time in ages, I am completely re-energised <laughs> and it's absolutely amazing to be part of this truly incredible team. <clears throat> 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 
Now, a few years ago, I never would have envisaged I would be saying this, but it's an absolute privilege to hand over to Anna Subri. <laughs> Well, thank you, Vicky. It also has to be said, I never thought I would be saying thank you for your wonderful speech, uh, but you, no, in all seriousness, you embody so much of what's happened in British politics, and as we all know, across the whole of the political spectrum. You've heard from just three of our excellent candidates, and as Heidi has said, our candidates come from all over the United Kingdom, from all backgrounds, and they represent the rich diversity of modern Britain. And I also want to tell you that we are so proud that a number of our candidates are EU citizens as well, and that's been very important for us. As you've, as you've heard, we are the Remain Alliance, and it was striking when we went through, and we went through every one of those 3,700 applications, and we should pay tribute to everybody that applied and unfortunately didn't get through, and I know you'll try again, because there are going to be many elections, and we'll be contesting all those elections, so please keep on trying, but it was really striking the number of people who identified as having been former members or supporters of the Labour Party, the SNP, Lib Dems, the Conservatives, and Greens. And of course, people, as you've heard today, who've never been involved in politics before. But they've all been involved in the people's vote. And we are proud to say to you today, we are the party of the people's vote. We are absolutely... Absolutely, as one, in our belief that Brexit, the biggest, the most important issue that our country has faced since the Second World War, must now go back to the people for their final say. Unlike the Labour Party, we are absolutely clear in our belief. No ifs, no buts, no backroom deals, no faffing about, no pretty pleasers. We're up front, unequivocal. We were never on the fence. We've always believed it, and now we do demand that people's vote. And we're also clear. We say to Theresa May, the only way out of the Brexit crisis is to take your so-called deal and put it to the people. They are entitled. They have a right to that final say on Brexit, especially our young people. Those people unable to vote three years ago, those very people who will bear the biggest brunt of Brexit. Because as you all also know, whichever way you cut it, however you do it, Brexit will reduce the future prosperity of everybody in this country and for generations to come. Mrs May, of course, is desperate for MPs in her own party to change their minds and to change their votes. And the likes of Jacob Rees-Mogg and Boris Johnson have done exactly that. MPs like Mansfield's Ben Bradley voted Remain, changed his mind, now he backs leave. He voted against Theresa May's withdrawal ag agreement, but he changed his mind and now he's voted for it. Well, if MPs can change their minds and change their votes, so can the British people. It's undemocratic, it's plain wrong to deny the people of this country rights enjoyed by members of parliament. And the, and the polls show that people are changing their minds about Brexit. Now, not in the way that some Conservative MPs have switched from Remain to Leave to please their local Conservative Association members, but older Leave voters who've listened to their children and their grandchildren who understand that Brexit is about those future generations, not their own antagonism towards the EU. And that's why there is this growing majority in our country who now believe that we should remain in the EU. And let's be absolutely clear about this. If, 
as we believe, the majority of people in the United Kingdom do not want us to leave the European Union, and we do leave, without that second referendum, it'll be the biggest and most dangerous denial of democracy ever, the greatest dereliction of duty by any government in our country's history, and we mustn't let that happen. So, you know, we are proud to say that we are the party of Remain, recognising, as millions and millions of people do, the length and breadth of our country, that the best deal that we have with the European Union is the current deal that we have with the European Union. But we are also, as you've heard, the party of change. And our MEPs will play a critical and important part in delivering the reforms that the European Union must make. Our MEPs, and you can see them sitting behind us, and this isn't all of them, because as you can imagine, at such short notice, I mean, I have to pay tribute to some of these guys, by the way. They have traveled literally hundreds of miles at the most incredible short notice to be here. And we are so grateful for you for doing all of that. But they, they represent all our candidates. And let me tell you about them. Because these MEPs will respect all their constituents, who, by the way, will pay their wages and their expenses. Our MEPs will actually turn up in the European <laughs> Parliament. Our MEPs, our MEPs will treat its members and its institutions with respect. They'll be part of a robust debate. They won't be brawling in corridors and hurling insults. We will have MEPs who will bring credit, not shame, to our country. Elected representatives we can all be proud of. That's what our MEPs will be, not the current motley crew of UKIPers and their ilk. And talking of Nigel Farage, <clears throat> he is the past. He seeks to represent a bygone time that probably in truth never existed. We, Change UK, we Tigs, we represent the future with a better, brighter, progressive vision of our country's prospects rooted in our membership of the European Union. If Farage is the figure of the past, then I know who is the face of our country's future. We founded an all-party parliamentary group called EU Future. We worked cross-party with Open Britain, and in time together, we formed the People's Vote. Like our fellow TIG MPs, we left our political parties, setting aside personal ambition and putting our country first. I'm proud to call him my friend, the real face of Britain's future, Chukaramuna. So, uh, well, thank you very much, Anna, for that uh, introduction. So, look, you've heard from our excellent candidates, who are an alliance of people who've left all the established parties uh, or were not involved in politics but all want to build that alternative. And as Anna said, and everyone has said, no ifs, no buts, we are determined to give you, the British people, a people's vote to resolve this Brexit mess so that you can vote based on what Brexit is today, not the undeliverable fantasy that we were told it would be three years ago. But look, this election is about more than that. It is about two competing visions of what modern Britain is and what we stand for as a people. On the one hand, you have Nigel Farage, a professional politician who entered politics three decades ago when I was still at school. He seeks to dress up his brand of xenophobic nationalism as change today. Sure, he's changed the name and the party colour, but it's the same old nasty politics. And as he said last week, there is no difference between Brexit, between the Brexit party and UKIP in terms of policy. 
And the culture is the same too. Take the founder of his new party, UKIP's former economic spokesperson, who recently resigned after Hope Not Hate uncovered Islamophobic material she had posted on social media and her extensive retweeting of racist far-right figures. At the heart of UKIP and the Brexit party's argument is that the EU, and in particular immigrants or people of immigrant background, are the cause of all of Britain's problems. And just remember, Farage is the man who got stuck in a traffic jam on the M4 and blamed it on immigrants. This isn't change. This isn't change because we've heard it all before. Now, you can either bow down to this nonsense or you can challenge it. The governing Conservative Party have adopted the Farage agenda pretty much wholesale since 2016, which is why they and our politics is in such a mess. The Labour Party sits on the fence and refuses to properly take Farage on. It is led by a lifelong Brexiter who would rather press on with this Brexit disaster of which Farage was the architect than argue for a different course and unequivocally back a people's vote. We, on the other hand, reject the politics of Farage. He doesn't speak for our nation and we will say so loudly every single day of this campaign. Because we believe, yes, we have got to bring our country together, and that requires fundamentally changing our broken politics. But we won't change our, part, our country by othering people of different nationalities and races and dividing our UK into them and us, London against the rest of the country, and so on. We won't change our country by indulging the lie that Brexit will solve the NHS funding crisis at the same time that those who told those lies go around promoting the privatization of it. We won't change our country by denying that radical action must be taken to reduce climate change. And we certainly won't change our country by leaving the world's single biggest market. So let me tell you this, there will be absolutely no fence sitting, no ambiguity on any of these issues by this Change UK party. If If you, like us, love your country and you believe the UK is a kind-hearted place, generous in spirit, and should be open to new ideas, people of different backgrounds, creeds, colours and religions, if you are proud of our history but also determined to embrace the future and transform the UK into a place where all our citizens get to enjoy the benefits of modern Britain, if you believe absolutely key to achieving these things is working at an international level through the EU and other international partners, partners, keeping our seat at the top table, then sign up as a supporter and campaign for us in these European elections. We must change our politics. We have to change the trajectory we're on. If you want to bring an end to this Brexit, part, this Brexit nightmare, vote for us because we are the party of change. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> Now, <laughs> thanks, thank you. Uh, I'm now going to pass on to the man who has been the motor behind so much of this campaign. And it is worth just remembering <laughs> This is an outfit that only started nine weeks ago and registered as a political party last week. And the, the man who is overseeing our European election campaign is our European election coordinator, the fantastic Chris Leslie, who's now going to oversee our Q&A. Don't worry. 
don't worry, don't worry. You're not going to get another speech. It's fine. It's all right. I'm here to do the, the uh, question and answer uh, session. And what I'm going to ask is if you could just put your hand up, whether you're from the press or a member of the public. Uh, we've got a little bit of time. Uh, and if you wouldn't mind saying where you're from, and I'll try and ask some of our colleagues, uh, members of parliament, to answer those questions. So why don't I start with uh, Kate McCann. suggested uh, earlier that change would support the government in a potential confidence vote, so could you see yourselves working with the Prime Minister, even supporting the government in a confidence and supply arrangement if that were ever to be the case? I'll, I'll, hide, I'll hand that over to Heidi in a second. A couple of things. Our aim is to make sure that the public have the choice in this European election to clearly and unequivocally vote to support a people's vote and a Remain alliance drawn from all of our political traditions and from those people who are fed up uh, with British politics. Now, obviously, there are other political parties who are going to claim the smaller ones that they are also in favour of a people's vote, and that's great, and you've got an aggregation of votes that will be able to be taken. But frankly, if those other parties uh, at this particular point in time were the solution to Britain's broken politics, I think we would probably know that by now. So we've come together. It's a sense of national duty as much as anything else. And as you know, Kate, we didn't necessarily want to have to see the Labour Party in this state or the Conservative Party in this state. But when they have moved to those ideological fringes, we, from the centre-left tradition, the liberal tradition, the one-nation tradition, have to come together and stand up to do something different. Mm -hmm. That's really, really important. Now, on, on this question, and Heidi, I'll, I'll hand to, uh, to you in a second, my own view, look, I don't have confidence in Theresa May, I don't have confidence in Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, the members of the Conservative Party in Parliament don't have confidence in Theresa May. The members of the Parliamentary Labour Party don't have confidence yeah, yeah. in Jeremy Corbyn. So nobody is going to be expecting to have confidence in any of that political setup. That's why we are here. Yeah. If and when the different political parties start playing their games, suggesting, oh, they, Corbyn would want elections or whatever it is, we have to say, what is in the national interest? And right now, this Brexit crisis is front and centre, and so from our point of view, we have to sort that out with a people's vote. Yeah. It is not the time for us to be going down a political rabbit holes for the party political advantage of particular main old political parties. So from our point of view, putting that national interest comes first and foremost. Yeah. Heidi. Yeah. And, and there's not a great deal to add to that because Chris is absolutely right. It becomes very you know, dramatic and exciting as, oh, a general election. But actually, that is absolutely the last thing this country needs right now. Now, what on earth would the main parties stand on? You know, the Labour Party and the Tory Party are an absolute meltdown. They are like tectonic plates beneath the surface, absolutely shifted. And there would be no grounds on which that they could come to be applied to general election. You know, so it becomes a procedural issue. Would MPs vote for general election in the House of Commons? Absolutely not. I'd be very surprised if they did. What we need to do is continue fighting as we are to demand better for our country. You know, a general election is not the solution. Better politics, better politicians, the sort of people that you see with us here today. And as Anna says, absolutely, the crisis on our doorstep right now is Brexit, and we will only fix that with a people's vote. Yeah. I'll go to uh, Nick Watt from the BBC. Thank you, Nick Watt, BBC Newsnight. Uh, question for Anna Subri, please. Um, Anna Subri, do you not face a massive challenge in this election, which is that if you believe in a no-deal Brexit, it's pretty clear who you vote for. You vote for the Brexit party. If you believe in Remain, there are an array of parties. And do you not face the life of Brian problem <laughs> with that debate between the People's Front of Judea and the Judean People's Front? You all have the same views. You have different banners, and it's all very confusing. Well, Nick, I'm sorry you're confused, but I think everybody, <laughs> everybody here is very clear. We are very clear. This is the Remain Alliance, as you've, as you've heard. We come from 
all parties, and I mean all parties, not just the Conservative Party, Labour Party, Lib Dems, we have people who, you know, we, I've read all their forms. Well, no, I haven't read all their forms. <laughs> Most of us have read all their forms, and these, these people are exhausted, I have to tell you. Uh, but in all seriousness, that was the thing that really did strike us, was that, you know, the, the number of people from all these different political parties and traditions, whether they were members or supporters, activists, and as I say, it, members of the SNP, former members and supporters of the Green Party, all there. We are the Remain Alliance, and I think the British people, as they hear more and more about Change UK, the independent group, the Tiggers, they will understand exactly who we are, what we stand for, that people's vote, remaining in the European Union, Union and changing it from within. I think it's very simple. But I'll happily talk to you afterwards if you still think of it. <laughs> okay. I'll take somebody from this side of the room. The lady, the lady there in, in the glasses, yes. Do you want to just wait for the microphone and just say uh, your name and who, where you're from? Thank you. Uh, my name is Penny and I live in Bristol and I'm totally obsessed with Spain and the EU. <laughs> but I do think we need to hear some of your policies to give the party some sort of solidity. Because a lot of people, I mean everyone here is obviously you're talking to the converted, but a lot of people don't really understand what you are about. Yep. <coughs> Absolutely. No, thank you very much for that, uh, that question. And by the way, thank you for those uh, who have registered as our supporters, who we said, if you want to come and uh, attend our event, you came today. I think we, we were a bit full, so there was a quite a bit of a queue outside, and we're hoping to speak to more people afterwards. It's uh, a European election that has started, and obviously we left the Labour Party and the Conservative Party nine weeks ago. We set out on our website the values that we share uh, and as I say, those are values that we, should, we shouldn't really uh, take for granted. They should be obvious, but sadly the main political parties have moved away from those. So for example, we do believe in a market economy, but a well-regulated market economy that produces uh, the revenues uh, and generates the money so that we can invest in our public services and have that decent, compassionate society that we all believe in. Over the next couple of weeks, we will set out our policy agenda for the European election. Uh, we don't want to give you not only 70 candidates today, but all of our um, uh, discussion on manifesto and so forth, all in one go, so watch this space. Uh, but for now, where we are, we believe our politics is broken and we must change it. We've come to together to do that based on values, values that are in the centre ground mainstream of British politics. And the first and the most urgent priority is to tackle the risks from Brexit. And we'll have more to say on climate change, on health, on education, on international alliances and so forth over the days ahead. So I think you'll be very pleased with what's to come. So, <laughs> next question. Um, uh, yes, this gentleman on the end. Uh, Thomas Colson from Business Insider. When you look at uh, where uh, the Brexit party is polling uh, and where your own party is polling, do you wish you'd been a bit clearer with the branding of, of your own party? I mean, we've heard you repeatedly refer to yourself as the Remain Alliance today, as the party of the people's vote. Well, why wasn't that in the branding? And, and if, uh, if you're happy with your branding, why, why are you not polling as well as the Brexit party? Well, um, we set up uh, in February uh, as the independent group uh, of members of parliament. Uh, when I sat down at uh, the Electoral Commission website to apply uh, for the registration as a political party, we discovered there are 433 political parties already, and they call themselves all sorts of things, and the Electoral Commission, of course, uh, have uh, to insist that everybody has a very different name. I would have loved to have registered the independent group, uh, but they said, you need to give a little bit more character uh, and describe what you're about. And so as a group of members of parliament, we came together, we settled on Change UK. It encapsulates that concept of the problems of our broken politics and the need for us to evolve and come together <coughs> as a country. Because I think if we want to do anything at all, it is bring our country together and change and fix our broken politics. Mm -hmm. And so branding and colors and all sorts of things uh, are very interesting for media commentary. And yes, it's my responsibility to put in that emblem. And a lot of people have said, I wanted the, I like TIG. Uh, a lot of people, you've heard the TIGGERS thing, the independent group, but the acronym 
the Electoral Commission uh, were, uh, well, they'll need to give us more time on that. But uh, thank you very much for, for the question. I'm going to pass to Chaka, who is eager, I can tell. <laughs> Look, and that's a good question. Polls go up and down. Uh, when the independent group launched, we were polling high. We were polling not far off where uh, the Brexit party were polling when they got similar levels of coverage. But I, I suppose I'd just say to our friends in the media, I remember all the predictions that not just you, but we were making at the beginning of the 2017 general election campaign when Theresa May was 20 points ahead. And five to six weeks later, the polls and the story was very different. So I don't think we should write off the campaign and carry on as if somehow the electorate are just kind of bystanders in this and we all get to determine what will happen at the beginning of a campaign, at the end of the campaign now at the beginning. So we've got five to six weeks. We're going to get out there across the country. We're going to be touring, doing rallies, all of it. Then let's see um, what people decide. The whole point of this and the point of the people's vote is that it's not the kind of Westminster bubble that determines what's going to happen, or a Brexit elite, frankly. Um, it's the people. That is the argument. So let's see where we are five to six weeks' time. Thank you. So, we'll go back over to this side, this gentleman here. Just say who you are, where you're from. <clears throat> My name is Peter Downey, and I'm from Bath. May I say I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you, Peter. Because you're going to need it. <laughs> Thank you. I stood down from Bath, having stood there until February 74, for Chris Majors, yeah. when he left the Labour Party, hoped to bring 87 parliamentarians, not to the Lords, I know, but, and then later <coughs> when the SDP was formed, I was president of the Liberals in Bath, and I then became the agent for the SDP and forced it through that they were given Bath. And I was then part of the campaign team that got John Foss into Parliament. Now, one of the things that I believe that I'd like to hear from, from you is whether you, as the European Party, pledge yourself to a European voting system. Mm -hmm. So, uh, now, first things first, it's really interesting, of course, the history of what's happened in our political system. And a lot of people do say uh, it's all set in stone, the tribes are there, the Labour Party, the Conservative Party, <laughs> Nothing can ever be done about this. You've just got to accept Corbynism. You've got to accept Europhobia. That is absolutely not true. And it's patronizing to the British people to say that somehow they can't change this. That is why we're going to give it a go. And sometimes you never know uh, what's possible, but until you try, you'll never find out. And that is what we're doing uh, as Change UK, the independent group. Now, the, on the electoral system question, this afternoon, I think, in the House of Commons, our colleague Angela Smith has a debate in Westminster Hall on this question of proportional representation, changing our electoral system. Uh, this is a discussion that I think we have to have. There are real uh, dilemmas that have to be involved. Many of us appreciate the constituency member of parliament connection. They like to know who to hold responsible. But we can see that it is a very unfair because when it um, uh, comes to reflecting the votes uh, cast for political parties, often the outcome is, is very far from that. That is one of those policy areas I think we will want to work on and talk about and make sure that we can develop, not just from our own personal perspectives, uh, but involving you. Yeah. Uh, and this is important to say as well, as I mentioned before, you're bringing together lots of different political traditions and histories in Change UK, the independent group people from the centre-left, the liberal tradition, One Nation tradition. If our journalist friends here are looking for different opinions or uh, alternative views, they will find them. Sometimes we will disagree amongst ourselves, but we will be able to do that uh, in a spirit of solidarity and constructive dialogue and not from an ideological position, but on the basis of evidence because evidence and an evidential policy-making process is what has been missing from our politics for a very long time. Yeah. The, la the lady at the very, very back there, if we can get a mic, and then I'll bring in a couple more journalists. Hello, Kate Wilson, Bristol Post. Um, I guess Kate. my main question is, why Bristol? Why have you chosen to launch your election campaign oh, in Bristol today? <laughs> <laughs> we... We the curious, and a lot of people are curious about what's going on in British politics, 
And it's perfectly right that not just people in Bristol, but across the rest of the country hold us up to the light and take a look and spin it around and what's going on and ask the questions, where will your policies go? What do you stand for? What are your values? And we felt that very much chimed uh, with the history and ethos of Bristol. And this fantastic venue has been uh, really great and I hope you're gonna have a look around and enjoy it uh, later on today. So, thank you for that. Yes, in the front row. We'll take two more after this. Thank you, Paul McNamara from Channel 4 News. Um, isn't your biggest problem that you've decided very little, well, two months in, people don't really know what it is you stand for. You haven't decided yet on what policies are. Taxes, they're too high, they're too low. Tuition fees, do you want them to go up? Do you want them to scrap them? There are, there are five different colours up there. I don't know what your party colour is. You've got two different party names here. Ooh, the only thing you seem to be convinced about is what a people's vote, and that's not in the name. No, so if I'm confused, how are people <laughs> going into the voting booth meant to know what they're taking for? Well, there's a, there's a devil's advocate uh, journalistic question, and it's a perfectly reasonable thing for you to ask because we have come across uh, together from lots of different political traditions, but we've come for an, uh, two principal reasons. Our politics is broken, and we all agree that has to change, and there is a Brexit a burning platform that emergency has to be dealt with. We have to have a people's vote, and we want to remain in the European Union. I'll hand this uh, to Heidi as well. Um, so Chris is right, you know, Brexit is the live issue right now and the clock is ticking on that and we would be foolish to give that anything other than our utmost priority. But yeah, I could give you a manifesto. Chuck, you could throw in a few ideas. Could get a couple of manner. But you know what, that would be something we prepared earlier. If we are serious, really serious about transforming the quality of government that our country has, then we don't just pull something out of our back pocket. We build it properly again from the beginning. So, so yes, we are asking you to be a little bit patient, but if I pander to your requirement, then I'm just doing it the same old, same old. And that's what has got us in the mess we are in today. I can't believe you haven't read my 25,000 word pamphlet on the centre ground. Anyway, <laughs> nobody seems to read it's great. It's great. Nobody's ever got to the end of it. So, um, I, I will come to this gentleman on this side. I'm trying to balance a couple more and then we'll have to wrap it up. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm Simon Knighton. I'm, I guess, an ordinary business leader in these parts. Um, I also chair a national health charity and um, I'm a chair of school governors as well. Um, I've got a plea and a question. Uh, the plea is this, that um, I believe that you cannot challenge emotion with fact. So one of the mistakes I think that we've made uh, consistently uh, in the United States and in the uh, referendum here was that we tried to challenge the emotion of the right with facts and experts and everybody saying this, this and this and we wheel out the next expert. I think what we need to do, Chuck has said it, there are two visions of Europe. We need to accentuate the positive vision of Britain as a free partnership, uh, modern democracy in a global world in which our young people are equipped to move from job to job to job. And those become the defining policies of our future. My question sort of builds on that because uh, at the, I'm not a, a Liberal Democrat background, but Vince Cable at his last party conference said, uh, leadership for Democrats can come from anywhere, or I paraphrase that. So are we the leadership for the Liberal Democrats? <laughs> Thank you. Well, Simon, um, 
I think I'll ask Mike Gapes to say a, a word in a moment about the, uh, the question of internationalism and the values that, the values that we have. Uh, in fact, um, Diana, where's Diana Wallace? Uh, is she here? Diana, Diana okay. Wallace, who is our um, number one candidate in Yorkshire. Diana was a uh, former Liberal Democrat member of the European Parliament before. And I only mention this because it's not just people from the Labour Party or the Conservative Party or Greens, but Liberal Democrats are also recognising that the, the current offer from the parties, and not of all of those parties are quite in the same level of uh, crisis, but it's just not good enough and we have to do better. So the leadership is being formed and that's why we talk about ourselves as a Remain Alliance, because we have to do it. We could have all... Uh, walked away in despair at the appalling state of the uh, offer from our main political parties, but we couldn't do that. It was our duty to stand up and offer better, and that's exactly what we've come together to do. Yeah, um, thank you, Chris. I just very briefly just say, one of the tragedies in British political history is that we have never discussed the reason why the European community and then the European Union was established. We've never really put across the importance of bringing together France and Germany and preventing war on the continent. And the, the fact that the European Union has been one of the greatest peace projects. Absolutely. And when the European Union was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, in other European countries, that was regarded as, as a badge of pride. In this country, we had cynical sneers from the mainstream media or even no recognition of the importance of that. And our generation has to remember that these debates today are not about us. They are about future young people in our continent and ensuring that we maintain that peace as well as the economic prosperity, the good environmental standards, the international cooperation, and the vision that the European Union provides to the rest of the world of a successful, peaceful cooperation between 28 countries. Fantastic Mike Gates. Mike, you're an absolute legend. I'm going to have to wind up, I'm afraid, because I've been told we've run out of time. But the final word to Sarah Wollaston. I want to return, thank you, um, to that question about policy, the Channel 4 question, because I think it's really important. And I want to tell you that I'm bursting to talk about health, about social care, about public health policies. But just for returning to that point about the, the real crisis before us, if you look at the data around what Brexit is doing to our workforce Absolutely. and to our fantastic yeah, yeah. EU workforce, the, the collapse in re recruitment from EU countries in our nursing workforce, what is happening to recruitment in clinical trials? There is no version of Brexit that will benefit science, research, public health, our NHS workforce and social care. And so that's the immediate crisis before us. And we need to be saying it loud and clear about the impact of Brexit on health, social care, public health and research. But I can assure you that very soon we will be setting out exactly what our domestic policies are. But this is the immediate crisis before us. And I want to come back to you and say that it's going to be about the evidence. It's going to be about listening to the workforce. And things like, for example, getting on with what has happened to our social care green paper. Yeah. Look at the yeah, way exactly. domestic yeah. policy has been completely eclipsed and obliterated by the monster of Brexit. Um, we need to get on and talk about those policies, and I'll be hoping to come talk to Channel 4 about exactly what those policies should well, be. Very based good. On the Thank you, Sarah. Right. I'm afraid, I'm afraid we have to wind up. Thank you all very much for your time and patience. This has been an absolutely astonishing launch of our European election campaign today. I'm so very grateful for those of you who've come and who've registered on our website, www.theindependent.group. If you'd like to join me in thanking our members of parliament and stand up, all of our candidates, please. Thank you very much.
get some pictures. Different colours. <laughs> Ooh, how naughty is that? <laughs>